Warning, this show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and Edited. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff. If you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life raw. Today's episode 196, and this is, is it worth living below your wage? I think this is a topic that a lot of people uh, need right now. This is uh, 2021. We're in the second week of April. And we got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of people struggling, and we want to make that struggle uh, lessened. We want to give you guys some cushion here. We want to give you guys some direction. And I think a lot of people uh, that I've witnessed and that I've experienced don't have direction. They don't have the education, the experience. They don't have the ability to, to most of them, to actually think for themselves and go, well, what can I do for my life? And there's a lot of things that is true that you don't really have control over, like such as this recession or the Great Reset and all these things that people are talking about right now. So you got to start figuring out stuff for yourself and figuring out what you do have control over. And one thing you do, that's how much you spend. That's that's uh, uh, how much you're going to use of the wages that you earn. Are you over over uh, living your, your lifestyle? Are you choosing your lifestyle correctly? Um, are you living... Uh, uh, at your wages means or are you overspending so is it worth it though I think is the biggest one because I've been doing this for the past I'd say 15 20 years right and I'm still uh, living below my wage I live in a tiny house aka travel trailer for those of you who don't know full-time uh, stationary though I don't travel around you know I'm not an expat or a, a rubber tramp or whatever you, you call those people but basically uh, I've lived, I've placed myself in some of the most inconvenient spaces in order to save money. I've, I'm not living my wage. There's a guy by the name of Dave Ramsey, and that's what he likes to uh, teach a lot of people is to act your wage, which is really good, helpful information. Uh, but you can act your wage in my book at that definition, and that means that you're able to survive. We want you guys to thrive. So you start, you need to start living below your wage. That way you can save a percentage of money. Let's say you make uh, $2,000 a month. We want to take at least a quarter or something, whatever you feel comfortable with, and start putting that money away. Yes, $500 a month is not a lot, but after a time, it does accrue and starts to build up into something for you. Uh, the background noise, by the way, is my F-350 pickup truck. Uh, it's my mobile studio. Speaking of uh, inconvenience and living below your wage, that's what I do every single day that I do my podcast. I utilize my time on my drive to record these things. So that's the background noise in there. Uh, sometimes we are parked and we give you guys a little better uh, audio quality, but for the end part, uh, for the most part right now, it's definitely inconvenience. Um, so yeah, living tiny like this is definitely not the, uh, I mean, my shower, it's it's so tiny. I'm six foot four, so when I'm in the shower, I'm, I'm uh, my shoulders are wrapped around the shower curtain, you know, I gotta duck my head a little bit. There's like so many things, cooking, is definitely a pain in the ass. I do a lot of my cooking outside. I live in Sunnyside, California, though, where it's super expensive, but the weather's very nice. Uh, and I cook year-round on my, a barbecue, and I've got a little uh, stovetop thing that I make. I use a wok to uh, actually make healthy uh, fast foods. And a lot of these things, it's inconvenient. You know, I got to set up fire bricks and if I want to bake a, some bread or something in my barbecue. And yes, it is possible. Uh, it's cold sometimes in the winter time. I don't really have a fireplace or a heater outside, um, you know, and we have a little uh, a canopy that goes over to block us and shelter us from the rain. But for the most part, um, I think all these inconveniences, everything far exceed, uh, which I'm moving on next is the experiences that it's uh, uh, afforded me. So yes, it's very inconvenient, but there's a, if you guys follow my Instagram uh, and uh, my Facebook page and stuff like that, the up and in it, You'll see that uh, most of the mornings in the summer, I'm off jogging at, at the beach almost every single day. Uh, I would record episodes and re and edit them on the back of my truck. I have a camper with a little bed in it. I open up the back doors and I got the ocean there. Go for a morning jog, do some fishing. And, uh, and I'm able to afford these things because I live way below my wage and I've been doing it for so long. Uh, for those of you who've been following me, you guys do know I experimented with uh, mini retirements is what I've called them. Uh, and I guess I've learned that it's it's not my idea. Other people are doing it as well. But because of my such low overhead, I'm able to save a lot of money. And in, and in addition to actually saving money to possibly buy a house or invest or something or set myself up for the rest of my life, I'm able to get time. 
And one of the things I have is a war on time, which I think is for everybody. Time really doesn't give a shit about any of us. And in my particular situation, I have two children and they're very young. I have a 13 year old and a 14 year old. And I've spent a lot of time where I take these mini retirements and I basically work eight to nine months out of the year and I take the rest off. I've been doing this for the past uh, five to six years. Last year in 2020, I decided not to. I decided to work on a whole new business, uh, but I got to work it at my own pace. Um, I've also able to earn an entire year's expenses uh, in advance. So 2021 is completely paid for, guys. My rent, my cell phone, my food, my gas, everything. I've got it all planned out. I wouldn't even have to work a day again if I wanted to, but I'd end up blowing all my money. And that's not what I want to do. I want to invest. And I actually want to work harder by bringing you guys these podcasts, all the shows and videos and things that I'm doing. And, and I want to work on new businesses. I'm, in, I own my own, I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own construction business. But getting back to the point here, the reason I'm able to do all these things and I have so much freedom is because the overhead is so low. Put it this way, guys. Most people are playing at least double for an apartment, for a two-bedroom apartment where I live. I live in a 30-foot travel trailer, right? AKA it's pretty much like a tiny room. I've done lots of conversions and things to it. But uh, it's afforded me to take my daughters on these excursions and trips where we'd go camping for like four to six to eight weeks, right? I get to experience my children before they, they move on, before uh, at least my, my oldest. Uh, and I wouldn't have had these possibilities and all these adventures and things that will, will change the course of my children's lives, such as uh, being invited to a Native American Indian bear dance right where we got blessed by a chief in the middle of the woods by a giant fire we got to dance around this wild bonfire like the lost boys from peter pan with uh with indians you know it's shit like that that doesn't really happen every single day man right um so i think the biggest reason uh, a lot of people would want to try this is uh, is to get ahead in life and i really think that you should go it's called eating shit really you know, you see all your friends, family, everybody doing stuff, and you're over there living in a tiny little house. For, for most people, I think it's an embarrassment. I think it's more of an embarrassment to, to uh, lose everything, to have the stress and have the appearance that you're, you're uh, successful, wealthy, whatever, but you're just working your fucking ass off. And it's got to be embarrassing, too, to wear your health down so bad that you end up with diseases and things like that, a stroke or high blood pressure. And, you know, it's not a very good thing. You're not a very happy person. Whereas you can live a lot poorer, you can appear to be poor. That's probably what I would say with myself, is I appear to be very poor. A lot of my secondhand clothes and things like that, I've, I've gone extreme. But it's because of these extremities, these experiments and practices that I put into my life, I'm able to make things move forward. So when, how long should one do this? I think it's up to each individual. I think that, yes, it sucks. There's a lot of inconveniences living tiny like I do and way below my wage able to, to save more than 50% of my wages uh, due to uh, the, my lifestyle design. But we all want to work towards something, and that's what I'm not quite sure of. But the one thing I am sure of is that it never hurts for people to have a lump sum of money in the bank. Understand, guys, I have a year's advance of, uh, of savings, right, for 2021. It's already paid for. I also have an emergency fund that would last me at least another year and a half. I also have another savings account that if I put the combined all those together, uh, I would literally have three years of money that I could just sit on. So no, regardless of what situation happens with me with this pandemic uh, and this uh, recession and all these things, because my business has finally been here in the, in the second quarter of, uh, uh, of 2021, I'm starting to notice things slowing down. Could be because of tax season, but I'm minimally affected. So when's a good time to quit? It depends on what you're you're after. So let's start off. Uh, I think in my my case, if things continue to go this way, I'm able to sit like a like a hawk perched on a branch, watching the world go round. Perfectly fine. Plenty of money. My my two children are completely secure. Before I make a move where I'd want to invest or do anything, I'm able to keep an eye on the world and see how it's moving, or maybe how it's not moving, how it's digressing or it's progressing. Either way, I'm fine. So. And sometimes I look, I wouldn't want to live this way forever, but if things continue the way they are, uh, I may need to live forever like this. I also have a special needs child, and I have zero help from the state, government, anybody. We're all on our own. So I may need to live this way for the rest of my life. So it could be forever. Uh, so for those of you who are really hurting and you really screwed up in life, didn't get a good education, or rather I would say you didn't educate yourself, 
you don't understand how money works and things like this and how to budget and all that. Maybe you might want to consider having an easier life, a lower overhead and live this way forever. That way you ain't got to think about all this shit, right? It's a lot of work to be, to think, well, how do I budget? How do I make more money? How do I build a career and all those type of things? Why don't, if you're just one of those people who just wants to get by, there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to own up to what you're doing. I just want to get by. I don't want to deal with the, with the minimal amount of hassles. I want the path of least resistance, which I think the majority of people live. Us hustlers and stuff, you don't know what our lives are. Our lives sometimes suck. We have a lot of stress, but we make big money. We have, we're in control of our finances. We're in control of our lives, but we don't have, the responsibility is ours. Whereas get buyers, people just, you know, nine to five, get by, go home, drink beer, smoke your weed, whatever it is that you do, eat bonbons, watch movies and stuff like that, and then just go back and do it again, do it again. Why not place yourself in a low overhead situation so that you can do more of that or not have to fight so much and lessen the stress? So it may be something that's forever. I think regardless of what you're doing, whether you want to invest for the future, live below your wages to uh, make something happen, you want to get emergency funds. And uh, that's what I spoke about. It's because of this low overhead, I'm able to sock away money. And this is something that you guys would have to practice. This is, it could be its own uh, show, title of a show, but try to save as much as possible. The way I look at it is if you could just start off with like 10%, right? If you're paying for a house right now, is a good measure here of how much you can save for emergency funds. If you're paying, let's say, like here in Sunnyside, California, $2,000 a month in rent, and you move to my neck of the woods and you're paying $750, $800 a month, take that money, that $1,000, $1,200, $1,300, whatever it was, and pretend you're still living in the house, but lower your, your overhead, live below your wages, live in, a, in an RV, and take that money every month and place that. Now we're talking like $1,200 a month will add up a lot faster than $500. If you can't do that, take like 10%, take something, just start a savings so that you have emergency funds. I'm gonna talk about another show which we're experiencing today where somebody I know whose vehicle's breaking down. They may need to buy a new car and they ain't got the money. You know, you, you don't have a workhorse to get to town, you know, you're riding horse, you're a cowboy without a, you know, you're a guy without a pony. You need to have a, a car and you need to have the emergency funds to keep that vehicle up. So the other thing I would say for people is to gain an education. If you want to go to college, if you want to uh, maybe educate yourself, you want to start a new business or something like that, and you want to read a bunch of books, watch a bunch of YouTube videos, listen to podcasts such as this, get your own education and be able to experiment and start something, a side hustle, um, or just education in general. What better place than to have that super low overhead where you have the time to be able to sit and read or study, do online courses, whatever it is. This is definitely going to help you guys out. Uh, business startup is what I just said. Uh, I run everything, believe it or not, out of an RV park. I have a uh, storage containers. I've got a, a 30 footer. I have a 40 footer. That's where I keep a lot of my materials and, and uh, uh, gear and stuff for my, my construction business. I have a dump trailer that's parked there. Everything's like $3 a foot. So it's like $150 for rent. And I've got all this space for everything I need. I got a V nose trailer with all my tools that I haul behind this F-350 pickup truck that you're hearing in the, the noise in the background. And uh, I run everything, believe it or not, out of a tiny little house. My office is most of the time my pickup truck or my office is uh, my pickup truck parked at home or it's the kitchen table uh, on a laptop. So if you want to start a business, I think it's definitely possible. Uh, I'm living proof. What do we have next if I don't kill myself taking these crazy turns here? We went through education, business startup, uh, investing. So when would be a time to quit, I guess is what the subject matter here is. I think that if you were able to, I'm gonna sneeze, warning. Achoo, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Allergies, everything's in bloom right now. Uh, I think if you wanted to invest, like say in, a, uh, in anything, a home or something like that, I'm sure this could go a thousand different ways. But if you wanted to invest in something instead of, and you had some money, you want to invest first to stay in your tiny house is the way I look at it with your low overhead uh, uh, home and make sure those investments take place. They take hold. You're educated. You know how to, to keep them going and they start to the ROI. They start to return on investment, start to pay you back. Now, as you feel confident, I guess is what I'd like to say, you know that you have the, the uh, uh, money rolling in. Everything's all set up. You've got a great plan. And now you can venture out from the, the shitty living, tiny living environment that you are in and be able to buy a house or whatever you're doing and live your life with more confidence. Because that gives you a big safety net that you can fall back on. 
in case you lose everything or something fucks up, something that you didn't foresee, you still have that safety of a low overhead living situation. So I'd say it's worth living below your wage on, on those, those terms. And the last one I have is create a solid plan. I would say that is the, if you get to my side of the woods, you know, my side of the fence where you're living tiny, living simple, you save a shit ton of money, you're investing, you, you've got maybe a side hustle that's turning into a full blown business, you get to quit your day job, you got it all set up. In this interim of that time, that's all where you would be planning. How much can I afford to live? If I want to invest in property, in a house, you know, and spend $2,000, $3,000 a month, can I afford that? Do I really feel like I want to do that? Because you're in a position of power, believe it or not, when you're living below your wage. When you've got this whole thing set up, as I said, you're the hawk now standing next to me on top of the branch, watching the world function or dysfunction, whichever way it goes. You have the power now to say, you know what, instead of getting that house, maybe I'll live here for another year and I'll take that, that, that uh, $2,000 a month. I'm going to up it from everything I have and keep saving that or invest that in the bank. We did talk about inflation and why saving is for losers uh, in another show, but if you still, regardless, you get the power to be able to get emergency funds so that any kind, you have money behind you basically, so any decision that you make, you're able to make it wisely. You're able to make it comfortably with the least amount of stress to go, to strike, to kill, to pull the trigger, as they say, for lack of better terminology. I don't know why that came up my mind just now. But you're able to uh, uh, assess problems. You're able to put out fires. You're able to know that you can recess and retreat back. So coming up with a solid plan, I think, could also be a, a show all in, in and of itself. But I don't know what your living situation is. I know what mine is. But the one thing, so I can't plan stuff for you. You'd have to plan that out for yourself financially. And what would basically make you happy? I think you should worry about your health, your spirituality, your joy, your happiness, your freedom. Do you want to give up your freedom from living in a trailer? Like for me, do I want to go invest in a house knowing that I can't go on these trips anymore? That uh, I'm going to have to take those three months, four months a year that I, I take off work. Now I'm going to have to work. Or do would I rather uh, uh, take a, a knee and live live lower and be able to have these freedoms, to be able to fish and jog on the beach and buy organic foods. I tell you guys, is it worth it? For me, we eat the best foods on the planet. I spend my money that I save on all organic, healthy uh, uh, cooking, home style cooking. It gives me time also to cook stuff from scratch. My kids are eating the best things possible. I tons of supplements. Um, I. I love mixing drinks and stuff on the weekends. I have barbecue Saturdays. I usually take my Saturdays off and I cook whatever I want. I usually don't do filet mignon and stuff like that, but I'll do like a rack of ribs and I'll smoke them for the entire day. I'll do some salmon. Bar like this Saturday, we're going to do barbecue chicken. I'll probably mix me some Malibu rum and Cokes and, uh, you know, I'll get my feel, I'll, whatever I feel like. I'm really excited. I'm ready for the weekend too. I don't know about you guys. Uh, but yeah, you get to do whatever you want. And I, is it worth it? I think most definitely. And I think that that's probably the biggest mistake for people. Or the biggest hurdle is that they don't know any better. And when they get stuck in high debt and high stress and things that you can basically fuck yourself where, you know, you get a mortgage and things like that. Those are things that you can't just up and walk away. You're cemented in. So before you cement your life in, to do things that you think that you want to do. Take some time for yourself, breathe, um, find out, do a lot of thinking, do a lot of planning, as I said, and try to figure out, is this the thing that you really want? Or is this the thing that you think that you want? So go out there, make your life happen, and have the freedom, that's what I look at. Out of all this stuff, yes, it is worth it because I wouldn't trade my freedom for nothing. That's the show, guys. I really need your guys' help to get the show off the ground. So if you can please like and subscribe if the show brings you any value. Uh, do give me some reviews on the podcast so that I can get more exposure. I'm, this this show's barely taken off anywhere. I don't know if the subject matter sucks. If it does, just please tell me and I'll quit the show. Um, give me a middle finger. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't really give a shit. Just let me know that you're out there. And if you like it, it's up and in it. You can check it out on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. And anywhere where they'll let me do these podcasts, uh, as I always say, guys, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends.